So today I'm going to show you as many tips and tricks as I can fit in to doing my makeup while I'm doing it. Now you know that even when I am reviewing makeup, I'm usually giving you tips on how to do your face if you're over 40, over 50 and beyond. And I really try hard to just stick with the makeup, but usually what happens is I'm giving you tips. So today I am just letting myself go and I'm talking the whole way through this video and hopefully you'll get some really great tips and tricks out of it for makeup over 50 and of course over 40, over 60, 70, 80, however old you are. These are mature beauty tips that I hope that you do enjoy. Before we do get started though, I'm going to show you what I have on. That's a part of my channel. I know a lot of people come here just for the makeup, but you guys do seem to like to see what I have on. Don't forget we have a numbering system, one through however many products we get through. Just remember the number and then go down into the description box and you should be able to look at the product and shop that way. There'll be a link next to it. And also there will be in the very first pinned comment here on the video, there will be all the links and the products that I do talk about in that first pinned comment. Let's go ahead and see what I have on that you might like, but if you don't wanna do that, there's a timestamp right here where you can jump ahead to just the makeup review or just the makeup that I'm doing. All right, we'll start out with what I have on for a top. Just a ribbed tank. It's kind of got a square neckline right here, but it is kind of cropped as well. So it barely comes right about to here. I do have it tucked in, but it comes about to there. It's a really nice stretchy top, but I will say that it runs a little bit small, so size up if you need to. And I paired it with just a cute Levi vest that I found that I am so in love with. I used to wear vests all the time, and then I stopped wearing them, but this one I thought was really cute. It's got some fun gold detailing on the pockets, and then also has just the little tab that goes across there. It doesn't tighten or anything, but I would say that this one is kind of true to size. This one's a large, and because of my fun chest here, I have a hard time usually with the large, but this one works really good. So I would say that this is fairly true to size for you, and then I also paired it with a pair of acid wash jeans that I really do like very much. These have a side zipper on them, they are a very straight jean, which I like about them too. One of the things that I don't think you're gonna be able to see about the jean, maybe if I backed up just a little bit more, this has a split down the front of them. I have got to get a better camera lens so that you guys can see these. It has a slit in the front, so it's got kind of just a little bit flare, a little bit of kick. And then the shoe that I paired it with is just a pair of really super comfortable shoes that I will show you in just a minute. Now let me get a little bit closer. I'll show you the shoes. Before I do that, this is just the purse that I've been carrying around lately. It's got that fun quilting on it that everybody is crazy for. The big bow on it, it's big inside. It's got two pockets. I really like that. And then it also does have the longer strap that you can use to throw it over your shoulder if you like it. But I just thought that this was really cute and really fun. Okay, for the jewelry and the earrings, this is just a really fun, like half hoop. It's a drop earring, it really isn't a hoop. I don't know why they call it that, but it's a cute drop earring that I just really think is so much fun. And it goes with just about anything. Wear it by themselves or pair it with some other jewelry. I do have a link necklace on, which I can also put down below in the description box. And then just a fun little bead right here on this necklace that I've had forever. And I think it came with a different necklace too. So you get a twofer on that one. All right, we're gonna get into this tutorial. There are so, so many different tips in here. So make sure that you're ready for that. Get yourself a snack and a drink and we'll sit back and we'll put on our makeup together. Don't forget that I do have a ton of base makeup tutorials, makeup tutorials for foundation and concealer. So I will have my base makeup done in this video to start with and to save time, I also have one side of my face done. So we're gonna do just the other side of my face together. Hope you enjoy the tutorial. Let's get into it. Let's start with putting on our our eyeshadow primer Anastasia Beverly Hills this is the one that I use all the time and just works so well for me cancels out any discoloration that you might have on that eyelid and really helps the eyeshadow to stick very well once you get that on there take any powder brush that you may have been using and just go across it to put a little powder on there so that your eyeshadow doesn't skip that's our first step all right we are using the brand new 
Alter Ego Midsummer Palette. This is what that looks like. And it is such a good comparison for the Anastasia Beverly Hills Nouveau Palette. Now it's kind of in diff a different order, but it works just the same. And to prove that, because I do have this side of my face already done, I use the Nouveau Palette on this side and we are going to use the Midsummer Palette from Alter Ego on this side. So I'm going to start by taking a fluffy brush from refer this is the number 15 and I'm going to go into this one right here which is kind of a neutral taupe color and then I'm going to go back and forth into the white just a little bit so I get a very light wash of color for my transition and then I'm going to of course just go back and forth a little bit above the crease so that you are getting most of your color above the crease. If you go down below the crease and you have hooded eyes or you have eyes that are sagging at all, what's gonna happen is all of your color is gonna disappear. So let's look down, but let's go really high above that crease. Take it all the way in to the inner corner by the inner part of the eyebrow and going all the way out kind of in a straighter line, not super arched, but a little bit arched there into the tail of the brow. Once you get that done, we're gonna go into the deeper colors in here, which actually look like they're a little bit green. They're very deep olive. I'm going to go into this color right here, and we're going to make more of a cool look. And I'm loading the brush up, yes, but I'm tapping it off a lot because I don't want too much to get on there to begin with. And again, I'm going to go just above the crease, the natural crease, so when I open up my eye, you can still see that there's color there and I'm going to bring it in about a third of the way, but I'm going into the crease more here into the inner part than I am out here. So out towards the tail of the brow, I'm going to be bringing my color almost straight to the tail of that brow. And what I'm doing with this particular look is I'm bringing it just a little bit further than the tail of the brow. Now that's something that I'm sure that you haven't seen before and you're looking at it, you're going, oh my goodness, I don't know if I like that. I get it, let's just trust the process. Okay, we're going to go back in here and we're going to build that up just a little bit and we're gonna to continue to push that out towards the tail of the brow and just a bit beyond it. Pick up a little bit more, one more time, and then we're gonna go right onto the lid and we're gonna deposit it and we're gonna build up this outer part of the lid about a third of the way in. And then we're going to connect all of this and push it up towards the tail of the brow. So it looks like we definitely have that swoop. Can you see how nice it is to pull that up like that, even when we're going further out than the tail of the brow, it's still pulling that up and we don't have to have a wing in order to make it look like it's pulling up. All of this we're gonna take care of in just a minute, but right now we're just working on just the shadow. So at this point, just take your rag or whatever you may have and just take off all the shadow off of that brush and we're going to just blend now. We're going to go ahead and we're gonna blend all of this so that it looks seamless and soft. And we're just going to continue to push just a little bit further past the tail of the brow. And once you get that to where you feel like it's really blended well, go ahead and grab your number 15 brush again. You don't need any more product on it. Just continue on and blend everything together. Make it look seamless. Now go down with your finger into this very bright green and pick that up on your finger and just dab it across your lid all the way two thirds out. We're going all the way across the lid and all the way into the inner corner. Just laying that down quite a bit of the product we're gonna lay down. And now as you can see, it is nowhere near as bright as this side. That's because now we're gonna take that same finger and we're gonna go into the matte white that's in here or the matte cream. And we're just gonna take that and we're going to dab it again across that green and just pick it up and make it very vibrant. Now you can see that putting that white on top of the green really brought it down or really made it more muted. And that's exactly what you want to do. Such a pretty look. Now you do have quite a bit, a little bit of mess going on out there. What I want you to do in this instance is I want you to take a rag. Mine is a little bit damp from what I was doing this morning. And I'm just going to take that rag and I'm going to use it almost like a brush 
and I'm going to just brush everything out. Make sure that it's not too far past the tail, but at the same time, I don't wanna lose that upturn right there. So I'm just going to make sure all of this is taken care of. And then what I'm going to have to do is I'm gonna to have to put a little bit of my concealer back in this area. Cleaning off my finger, I did not use a lot of concealer there anyway today. I actually used mostly my foundation underneath my eye, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use just a tiny, tiny bit of the concealer and we are going to just dab it underneath the eye. And once I get that on there, I'm going to let it set for a few minutes and set up while I do a few other things. Now just letting it set, I'm going to take a spoolie off of the ColourPop pencil that I'm using for brows and I'm going to just brush up these brows right here and then I'm going to brush them inward and then I'm gonna brush them down. Now the reason that I do that is because I wanna get everything in there, all the makeup that I had in there out, but also brushing them down. You all of a sudden get to see where your natural brow line is, where you need to fill everything in. And what also helps is I don't have to go in with so much pencil. I'm going to use the new Sephora. Uh, this is a brow gel, but look at how tiny the little spoolie is on there. Isn't that great? In very small strokes, I'm going to start to just barely build it up and of course I'm going to take it out further in more of a straight line. I don't want to pull my eyebrow down. I want to pull it in a straight line if I can at all so that the tail of what we did with that eyeshadow meets that and it looks like it was purposely done that way. So in here we're going to go a few strokes inward a little bit more than we would normally do because we want a little bit more thicker brow. And then we're going to go through the brow again and continue to go through your brow. I only use this product unless there are specific bald spots I need to fill in. I only use this product to do my brows. I love other brow products too and I try them all the time. But right now this is so easy for me and it's giving that really nice fluffy look that I like and it's helping me to look like I have more brows than I actually do. Okay, done with the brows. Now just go in with a clean finger and really tap out any of the excess on the concealer that you had because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over it with powder to set everything. You know everybody and their dog is using these little triangle puffs, but they really are nice. I also did wanna show you that the Laura Mercier, the new powder that she has out, I really do like this, and I like it to set my under eyes. I did not think that I would like any sort of a shimmer to set my under eyes, but this doesn't have so much shimmer that it makes things look weird. And I also have found that the nice thing I do like about under eyes is when you have a little bit a wet look underneath there you look like you have a little bit more hydration and I love that about having on concealer but then you put powder on and all of a sudden it looks like you just dried yourself out immediately so putting this little tiny bit of the powder that has a little bit of shimmer on it from the Laura Mercier helps that. I'm also going to go in with another PR product. Now I will tell you that the jury is still out on this. This is the Makeup Forever. It's called HT Skin Twist and Light. Mine is in the color light. I do not like this delivery system is all at all. It's like you have to work in order to get the powder out and it's like you're breaking your arm to do that. So I am not crazy about that delivery system. I don't feel like you can hardly get anything out of there. Maybe that's the point. I'm not sure, but I've been using it for a little bit now and the delivery system just does not have me convinced that it is the best powder. And maybe it's because I can't get enough out to really see whether or not I like the powder. All right, makeup over 50. I also do a very strategic inner corner highlight. I found very recently that I love this Giorgio Armani eyeshadow. I just put that on a paddle brush and I'm just going to lay it down right here in the inner corner. Forgot to do this side, so we're gonna do it a little bit. And we're going to just distribute that so it looks more natural than just a bright little disco ball in the corner of our eyes. I'm gonna go ahead with my pencil brush. I'm going to pick up the green that is in here and it is a green that is a shimmer. I'm going to pick that up and I'm gonna pick a little bit of this teal blue 
deep teal blue up. And then I will tap that off and I will put that on as my eyeshadow liner. Connecting it with the outer part of the eyeshadow. But I also stay away from this inner corner as much as I can. I got a new eyelash curler. I don't know if I'm completely sold on this. It's okay. It's not got a very nice round to it as far as the half moon dome part goes. It doesn't fit my eye really well. It has like a little separating comb on it right here. And that's nice, but I don't know if I'm 100% sold on this thing. So the jury is out, and I think I still like my refer. I think refer is probably the one that made the best eyelash curler I've ever used. It's so gentle, so easy to use, and it just molds to your eyes so nicely. Let's go ahead and use some brown eyeliner across the top of the eye before we put on our mascara. Inner corner of the eye very, very close to the eyelash root, and then all the way out, but don't drag your eye down. Try to continue your eye look out with just a little bit extra going out. Don't do a wing, just go a little bit extra there. And now I'm also trying out, and I am actually quite in love with this, the new e.l.f. Lash and Roll. I was really surprised. I'm not a humongous fan of the benefit roller lash but this one is really nice it lengthens and it gives me a lot of volume and I'm really surprised at how I was taken with this in that it does do its job and it doesn't flake or smudge on me and yeah I'm really excited about this one I think they did a great job for a dupe okay I'm probably the most surprised and excited to share with you the new elf halo glow beauty wand and this is the contour one I'll make sure that in the description box next to the link is the color I believe this one is the lightest one I'm really surprised at how nice these are just really a great product and I'm I have it on this side so we're gonna put it in my hairline what I want to show you about doing your hairline especially with contour is that this is the easiest way for you to disguise your hairline and you want to do it with a little bit more muddy of a contour and when something says a contour but it looks really warm you want to steer clear of that because it's going to be more of a bronzer and it's really not going to give you that receding shadow that you want what i want you to do normally we as women have in mind where we think that our hairline should have started so we have all this space mine goes way back there and i feel like i want to disguise at least two fingers full if not three fingers full of where i think my hairline should have started so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw right here let's push up just a little bit more out i'm going to draw right here uh, oh gosh I'm gonna draw right here where I think my forehead should have started and then I'm gonna draw on this side and then I'm gonna draw down. And that is really it. And what I want you to do now is I want you to take a dense shader brush and push all of that contour back into your hairline so that it looks like it is shaded and make sure you get the edge up here in the front but this is the easiest funnest way that I have found recently to do contour and I am and I feel like I'm almost the queen of contour because I've done so many contour videos but this has been a very very easy way for me to do my contour I take it clear into my hair and yes it may look like it's not going to work yet but believe me trust the process it will work okay you've buffed everything out now take whatever you used with your foundation and just go along there once again and bring it together in a seamless line looks so natural and so nice if you feel like you got too carried away take that all the way up into the hairline and work with it that way I love this process I think it's so great now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go above where I feel like I should have a cheekbone and I'm going to paint that there and again take the brush the very dense brush by the way this is the new BK Beauty it's the in-between one between the contour and the foundation one and it shades so well I love the way that this brush shades so I'm going to just bounce or stipple I'm going to take with whatever is left on my brush and I'm going to go up like this I'm going to go just towards my nose I don't do a lot of nose contour I also want to take that contour and I want to disguise 
any sort of gels I have, which are right here. So I'm gonna go in a straight line and then I'm gonna go in a triangle right here and try and disguise the double chin and come straight down and get rid of this turkey neck. So here we go. And we're going to once again, just use this brush to really buff out and blend everything together so that everything just looks so seamless. What I don't want you to forget is go in between each and every step with the original sponge that you use to do your makeup. Now you may have used a foundation brush to put on your foundation. If you did, just keep some sort of a sponge by you. This is a really great sponge. It's called the Stands Out Sponge. And going in between each step, it really does help. And that's really what it was meant to do. It just meant, is meant to perfect. Okay, another new product is the Halo Glow Beauty Wand Blush. These blushes are very, very pretty. They're very saturated. And I actually don't put these right on my face. I squeeze it onto my hand. And then I do use a beauty blender for this. And I just dab into the product and kind of distribute it around my hand a little bit so it's not going to get so much on my cheek at once. And then I go right over top of what I was doing there with my contour. And I'm just going to put however much on and build it however much you think that you need to meet your blush needs. You can go as light or as dark as you want to. This is a very, very pretty blush. And I have had this side on all morning long. I am really enjoying using it. Of course, I use a lot of my blush out here towards my temple to kind of build that up. And I also will go up into my hairline just a little bit. And it kind of helps with that contour that we just did bring everything together. I just think this is such a beautiful look. Now we're gonna use the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty. This is the highlighter, and I'm going to put that there on my hand again. I don't wanna put that right onto my face. And I happen to have this two-sided tart brush with me, so I'm gonna just put that on that really thinner side, and I'm going to spread it around again, and then I'm going to put it on my cheeks. Now, really, I don't really need this because that blush was so, so very glowy itself, but the more glow, the better. We might as well go for it. I'm gonna put it a little bit right there on my Cupid's bow. If you wanna put it on your chin, a little bit down your nose, a little bit across your forehead, that's totally up to you. I'm going to go back and I'm gonna take what little bit of blush is on that sponge still, and I'm going to just dab it across my face. Sephora, I don't know if they have this anymore, but I know that they have had it very recently. This is their Prime Lip Liner. I forgot I had it and it went in the back of my drawer. So I'm going to outline my lips bigger than they normally would be because I want there to be a barrier for where my lip gloss is gonna go. This is the Revlon Color Stay Ink Suede, and this one is called In Charge. This is quite pink, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. And I'm gonna top it with tiramisu from the NYX Butter Glosses. I love this one. That's gonna tame our pink down just a little bit. All right, I'm gonna take my hair down and we will talk about the look. Okay, I hope that you did enjoy seeing this quick tutorial of tips and new makeup that I wanted to try for you. Speaking of, this palette is just so amazing and I am completely and totally blown away with the wands and the lash roller, lash and roll, better get that right, the lash and roll, from e.l.f. I really have been enjoying this. As I said in the beginning, I have a ton of tutorials on foundation and concealer if you wanna see those, and I'll make sure that I link a couple down below in the description box for you. Don't forget that everything that I've talked about and anything that I'm wearing will be listed in the first pinned comment on this video as well as down in the description box because I know some people kind of have a hard time finding the description box, but we should be able to easily find the comments and I hope that does help you. Make sure you tell me down in the comment section what you think of the look and how it turned out. And I hope that this kind of bronzy look with a little bit of brightness to it helps you out. I hope everybody is doing well. Please stay happy and healthy. I love you so very much and take care. Bye my friends.